Have you ever wondered why a 12 lead ECG has only 10 leads? Or have you ever wondered how you get from this to this? If your answer is either yes or no, in the next few minutes I will explain to you through our 3D animation why a 12 lead ECG has only 10 leads and how the ECG machine is reading the heart's electrical activity. If you want to have all the content from this video as an interactive experience, check our app 3D ECG Leads on the App Store. Now, the big question is, why does a 12 lead ECG have only 10 leads? It doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, the reason is that the word lead can refer to two totally different things. An ECG lead can refer to the wired connection that goes from the skin electrode to the machine. We will refer to this as electrode leads. Secondly, the lead can also be referred to as the tracing that is recorded by the ECG machine. We will refer to this as tracing leads. So to clarify, when we say that a 12 lead ECG has 10 leads, what we are really saying is that a 12 lead ECG tracing is recorded by 10 skin electrodes. Okay, now the next question would be, how are 10 skin electrodes generating 12 different readings? To answer this question fully, we will have to look a little deeper into the way an ECG machine works. Firstly, let's have a closer look at the leads. The first that we will look at are the electrode leads. On this 3D model, you can see some coloured objects that are attached on the chest and on the limbs. These are the electrode leads. Their purpose is to read the electrical signal from the skin. To be more specific, the electrical signal that is generated by the heart. Therefore, they are providing the input. There are 10 different leads that serve as electrodes, six of which are placed on the chest, and four that are placed on the limbs, LA, RA, RL, LL. To avoid any confusion, the system being used throughout this video is called the American Heart Association Color Coding System, also known as AHA. For more information about the color coding system, check our lead placement video in the description below. Now, let's take a closer look at the tracing leads. On this 3D model, we can see the 12 lead ECG tracing here. And here we can see the heart with some lines going towards it. These lines are a representation of the tracing leads and their role is to record the electrical activity of the heart. There are 12 different tracing leads which will read 12 different views. The readings are most often recorded on paper in 12 specific positions. You can see them highlighted here. Taking a closer look at this model, we can see that the tracing leads are grouped in two planes, six of which are on the horizontal plane and six are on a vertical plane. The ones placed on the horizontal plane are known as the precordial leads and are named V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. The ones placed on the vertical plane are named AVL, AVR, AVF, 1, 2 and 3. These are known as the frontal leads. So we will now look at their numbers. The precordial leads are 6 electrode leads for 6 tracing leads. When we compare the frontal leads, it is clear to see that their names differ and that there are 4 electrode leads for 6 tracing leads. What is even more fascinating is that out of these four electrodes, only three participate in the reading. The reason for this is because the right leg electrode is the grounding. In other words, the right leg electrode is more of a safety feature and does not participate actively in the recording. So, the reason there are 12 tracing leads and only 10 electrode leads is because three of the electrode leads generate six tracing leads and that one electrode lead doesn't actually actively participate in the reading. To explain why these electrodes generate so many leads, we will need to dive a bit deeper. So let's go further and take a look at another 3D model. Here we can see the electrode leads. Please note, this is not the way they should be placed when performing a 12 lead ECG, but for the purpose of this demonstration, we shall go with this. Whenever possible, the limb electrodes should be placed on the wrists and ankles. These arrows here represent the tracing leads. Three of them form this triangle. The other three generate what could be a reversed Mercedes-Benz symbol. 
The ones that are grouped as a triangle are also known as the standard or bipolar tracing leads, and the triangle that they form here is known as the Eindhoven's triangle. The other three arrows that are grouped to form the reversed Mercedes-Benz symbol are known as the augmented tracing leads. Now if we take a closer look we can see that there are a lot of pluses and minuses which all represent the polarity of the electrode lead. This is important because these pluses and minuses are known as the positive and negative electrodes and hold the secret to how the ECG machine works. To understand this concept, we are going to take a closer look at a heart that is depolarizing. Now, let's move to this section here and press the play button. Here you can see a red wave that moves along the heart. This is an illustration of a heart that is depolarizing. As you are probably aware of, when the heart is depolarizing, it generates an electric signal. This electric signal has a magnitude and an orientation. As you can see here, the orientation of the depolarization wave is downwards, slightly to the left, and is traveling towards this positive electrode, which is attached on the left, represented by LL. Now here comes the interesting part. What the ECG machine actually does is compares the signal that is sensed by a positive electrode to the signal that is sensed by a negative electrode and it identifies any differences between them. In other words, it will compare this electrode's reading to this electrode's reading. And this is how a bipolar lead is generated. The tracing lead seen here is actually tracing lead two. Now, another important fact is that if a wave of depolarization will move towards the positive electrode, a positive deflection will be recorded, as it is demonstrated here. Looking closer at this white lead electrode, which is the right arm electrode, we can see that in this particular case, in other words, in the formation of lead 2, it acts as a negative electrode. Now what do you think will happen if we change this negative electrode to a positive one? When changing it to a positive electrode, suddenly we have another lead. This is lead AVR, and as you can see, it records as a negative deflection. This is because whenever a wave of depolarization moves away from a positive electrode, a negative deflection will be recorded. Now we know that if a wave of depolarization travels towards a positive electrode, a positive deflection will be recorded, and if a wave of depolarization travels away from a positive electrode, a negative deflection will be recorded. But what about the negative electrode? What is his role in all of this? Well, as we will see later, it gives us the orientation of the lead. What you may have spotted already is that the negative electrode has changed completely and instead of being one electrode lead, it looks like it is formed by these two physical electrode leads. This is how an augmented lead is generated and the tracing lead here is lead AVR. Tracing lead AVR has the right arm electrode as its positive electrode and the negative electrode is a virtual electrode resulted from averaging the left arm electrode with the left leg electrode. This is also known as Goldberger's Central Terminal, or simply GCT. Goldberger's Central Terminal is actually the reason behind the three extra augmented leads, and therefore is the reason why a 12-lead ECG has only 10 wires. Goldberger's central terminal is specific to the augmented leads and results from averaging the limb electrode leads that are opposing the augmented leads positive electrode. As you can see here, in the case of AVR, LL and LA, that are opposing RA, which is the positive electrode. This average will generate a negative virtual electrode and is situated somewhere more towards the middle of Eindhoven's triangle, so it is able to generate a different angle. OK, so now let us look at all these frontal tracing leads one by one. Tracing lead 1 has the right arm electrode lead as a negative electrode, and the left arm electrode lead as the positive electrode. Tracing lead 2 has the right arm electrode lead as a negative electrode, and the left leg electrode as the positive electrode. Tracing lead 3 has the left arm electrode as a negative electrode, and the left leg electrode as the positive electrode. Let's focus on the negative electrode to see its importance. As you can see here, it is placed on the left arm. If we move back to lead 2, it is on the right arm. 
If we move forward to lead 3, we can see that the positive electrode remains the same, and the only thing that has changed is the negative electrode's position and the lead's orientation with it. Tracing lead AVL has the left arm electrode as a positive electrode and Goldberger's central terminal as a negative electrode. In the case of AVL, Goldberger's central terminal is the average of the right arm electrode lead and the left foot electrode lead. Tracing lead AVR has the right arm electrode as a positive electrode and Goldberger's central terminal as a negative electrode. In the case of AVR, Goldberger's central terminal is the average of the left arm electrode lead and the left foot electrode lead. Tracing lead AVF has the left leg electrode as a positive electrode and Goldberger's central terminal as a negative electrode. In the case of AVF, Goldberger's central terminal is the average of the left arm electrode lead and the right arm electrode lead. It is important to remember that every tracing lead has a negative electrode and a positive electrode. The negative electrode can be a physical electrode as it is in the bipolar leads and other leads can have a virtual electrode as in the case of the augmented leads. Also, I'd like to add that in the case of V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6, the virtual electrode is generated by all three limb electrode leads being the right arm, left arm and left foot and it is named the Wilson's Central Terminal. So to conclude, the reason why a 12 lead ECG has 10 leads is that one of these leads is the grounding and with the aid of a virtual electrode, three extra leads can be generated. So nine electrode leads can generate nine plus three tracing leads. Thank you for watching and don't forget, if you liked our video and feel that a 3D 12 lead ECG pocket reference would help you, just follow the link below and get our app from the App Store. If you would like to see more future 3D medical videos, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, if you would like to stay updated with our latest products and offers, subscribe to our page www.3decgleads.com. Thank you.